स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello friends I welcome you back to the lecture series of introduction to science fiction studies I hope you are enjoying it through and through today is one of the most interesting lectures that we will be going through together that is uh, science fiction and time travel what are the connection between the two how do they capture the imagination of readers throughout the world these two concepts time travel and science fiction they go hand in hand since time immemorial whenever a person has tried to philosophize about time only one thing has come to everybody's mind can we travel back in time because our life in our life time goes in a unidirectional way that is here on one way uh, once we are born and some day we will die and the time that is moving is moving towards our death don't be sad this is not a sad thing it is a fact of our life so in this particular concept we understand that time is irreversible you cannot go back in time because time is a concept that we cannot control we don't have any uh, particular idea that whether it can flow in a different way or what is the nature of time but the physicists they have contemplated they have talked about it they have discussed it they are in the verge of making discoveries which are related to the nature of time because some of them have an idea that time was uh, only a human construct it is some other say that it is another dimension so there are many concepts of time we will begin from there okay concepts of time chronological time often viewed as a linear sequence of events linear means one line there is only one line if it is non linear then there will be branches like this right this is non linear okay but if there is only a single line like this one that i have drawn over here that is a particular um flow that is in a particular way that is linear sequence of events today i woke up in the morning then i got dressed then i had breakfast then i came to the studio then i am recording the lecture after that i'll go and have lunch so it is one after the other it is not like that while i am having breakfast i am also recording the lecture and i am also going to lunch all these three events cannot take place together in time that is why it is a linear progression that is we are going forward in time measurement using units such as seconds minutes hours days months and years helps us help us quantify the duration so if time is considered as a quantity if we consider time as a, a quantity then we will try to understand how can we measure time can we measure 1 kilo of time no can we say that 5 uh, kilometers of time no uh, can we uh, can we say 5 liters of time no but we can say 5 hours 5 seconds 5 minutes right so this is the way we quantify time between events and organize our daily lives 
I will wake up 6 in the morning. Then at 6.30, I will be ready to go for morning walk. At 7.30, I will be ready for my breakfast. At 8.30, I'll be ready for uh, taking my kids to school. At 9.30, I will be ready for office. So all the events together, they are in a chain of sequence. And the duration between 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, this one hour duration, that is the measurement of time that we are making. Now, relativity. Central to Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, experience of time can vary depending on our emotional state. Experience of time can vary depending on our emotional state, age, and the activities we engage in. Time may seem to pass quickly during enjoyable experiences and slowly. Experience of time can vary depending on our emotional state, age, and the activities we engage in. Time may seem to pass quickly during enjoyable experiences. See, look at this particular sentence. That is relativity. Theory of relativity states that there is always a frame of reference. It is almost like if I'll give you a very good example. When you are standing in front of a railway track, suppose there is a train which is passing by, your duration of looking at the train will be more. If you are also sitting on a train which is passing, two trains are crossing each other, then your duration of looking at the other train will be less. But if you are, uh, that is, when you are standing, your, uh, there is no motion, you do not have a speed. But when you are moving in two trains in two opposite direction, then the speeds are added up and the time for which you will be looking at the other train is lesser. So your moving frame of reference is different from your standing frame of reference, right? So time may seem to pass quickly during enjoyable experiences and slowly during unpleasant or tedious tasks. For example, you are watching this lecture right now. Probably you are having a very good feeling about it that yes, let me fast forward the lecture. Let me set the time of the lecture uh, to 1.5 times uh, speedier than what uh, she is actually saying. So that way, this boring lecture will be over very soon. But if you are watching a movie, for example, let's say Tom Cruise, Shah Rukh Khan, John Abram, I don't know, the all the superhero stars, you will see that how three hour long movie seems like, you know, five minutes. Uh, right now the movie started and it is ending right now. But this lecture of one hour is you know, stretching on, I cannot be here, it is a you know, cross on my shoulder. That is relativity. When you are in the class attending a very uh, interesting seminar, somebody is showing an experiment and everybody is uh, inside the classroom looking at that experiment. Oh wow, the chemical from uh, blue it is turning to pink, the pink chemical is turning to red. These are the chemical reactions that are happening. You will see that the class finishes very quickly. You feel that, oh, the class is over. But when you are given a task, you have to solve a mathematical problem or you have to write an essay of 500 words, you will see, oh my God, it is taking us so long. So our perceptions of time are different. For a boring task, it becomes longer. For, a interest, for an interesting task, it becomes uh, shorter. Then, we have the concept of the arrow of time. Directionality known as the arrow of time. So directionality means moving in one direction, right? Events occur in a specific order from the past to the present and into the future. So directional is like this. This is the present that we are living in. This is the past that we have already lived and we cannot go back to it. And this is the future. It will always remain the future. Even if we go to this part in time, 
this will be our present and our future will extend if we go to this part this will again be our present and the future will be further so we will always live in the present and moved towards the future leaving behind the past so that is the directionality and it is generally considered impossible to reverse this direction it is not possible for us to go back to the past or move forward to the future if we are able to do that that means we are traveling against the direction of time time is traveling in a particular direction it is 10:30 in the morning then it is 8:30 in the evening then there is 10:30 in the next morning but it can never be 10:30 in the morning on 21st august and then the after 10 hours it will be 10:30 in the morning uh, of 20th august no time cannot go back philosophical considerations nature of time what is the nature of time is it a solid kind of thing or is it a is it a something like space is it something of a physical quantity can we see it we are three dimensional beings we have a length a breadth and a height we are 3d we look at things uh, in a 3d kind of angle we cannot see anything which is uh, in a fourth dimension we don't know what that is because our dimension is related to three dimensions so is time visible in other dimensions is it accessible is it approachable in other dimensions we know that time is like the only thing that is making us do whatever we are doing right now so can we control the time any uh, in near future questions about whether time is an object reality object reality means something you can hold or have a look at from a subjective point of view or a human construct because our human uh, life is like that we are born we grow up and we die therefore time is relevant to us it might not be relevant to anything any other uh, universal object as well as its relation to space and existence so how is time related to space the only two things that we are sure of in this entire universe is time and other is space psychological time our perception of time can be influenced by cognitive processes for example during moments of heightened focus or anticipation time may appear to slow down when we are focused a lot on something when we are very we are also in a kind of anxiety in a tension like situation you will see that even one moment seems like one hour that is also a possibility so a time the perception of time the way we look at time the way we feel about time is also psychological that is what are the thoughts that are in our head that also impacts our understanding of time cultural perspectives different cultures may have unique ways of perceiving and valuing time some cultures emphasize punctuality and adherence to schedules while others have a more relaxed approach to time it's very common in india you want to start a conference at 10:30 people are coming at 11 oh yes now we are going to start the conference i'm sorry but that is a truth in america or britain or any other european countries especially in germany and also in japan there is not one minute delay in anything the moment you delay you lose respect of the people and here people go with the expectation oh they have called us at 7 we will go at 8 so that you know they will be ready for us But this kind of concept i am not saying which is good which is bad i am saying the approach towards time the value that we assert towards time that is something again culture specific right time and memory time is closely connected to memory our ability to remember the past events and anticipate future ones is intertwined with our perception of time with time with the passage of time 
we acquire a lot of memories and any time we face similar kind of situation we immediately remember yes back when i was younger i had this kind of interaction i had i had known such people and uh, i will anticipate that if some situation or some people like that come into my life i know how to act i will know how to do what i will know how to guide whoever comes to me so the concept of memory is only there because there has been a time lapse time has made me wiser and i have stored all the information i have gathered all the information uh throughout time and stored it inside my head so that in future i will uh, take help of that information and do my works for example the first time i started recording these lectures i did not have idea what to do how to look at it how to approach the camera how to look at the screen how to address the audience but with time i have understood that these are the instructions that are given to me these are the ways i should um, use make use of hand gestures these are the words that i should not repeat frequently i should uh, use these kind of uh, pointers or ppt slides all of these things this has happened only after a certain time has gone by and with that time my memory has been enriched with all the information all the details i know right so now the time that i am spending here in front of you it is more efficiently spent efficiently spent because i don't have to bother about the things which i uh, didn't take care of before because now they are part of my habitual schedule right so moving on now we come to the concept of time travel what it is to Uh, what does it feel what is the idea of time travel to begin with time as a fourth dimension movement along the fourth dimension in addition to the three dimensions of space length width and height this idea comes from the theory of relativity i'll give you a very small example how does a fourth dimension gets created there is a mathematical uh, a very small example you will understand it very nicely now we have a car let's say we have a vehicle okay i'm drawing a very bad car so excuse me for that uh, we have a car which is going from this place uh, towards this part okay you have some windows and doors okay so from this place it is going towards this place this point is b this point is a so from b to a it is traveling fine so after this when uh, this particular car is moving it has in itself it it has length it has breadth it has height right so it is already a three dimension object suppose now i place a small clock on the head of the car a small clock with hands and it is showing what is the time now in that particular thing we are adding a time also a dimension of time that at this time the car is at this place already we have the distance dimension right the distance so if we are going to chart it in a graph we have the car moving from uh, this is the distance right and this is the time this is the normal kind of time if we are plotting the action of the car from one place to the other this is the normal kind of thing so the car is taking this much time and covering this much distance like this it will be plotted but how do we plot the um time on top of the car it will be a different graph altogether that the car has covered 5 kilometers and at 5 kilometers covering the time that has been covered in that particular clock is different so time there is different from what the actual time is 
because the time it is again a dimension it is that time is not only moving in time but also moving in distance right so it is these are very uh, interesting mathematical and physical um, concepts that you will come across so time as fourth dimension so we can call it that okay once uh, we are uh, thinking of the movement of the car then the clock that is inside the car so the time you put that you are increasing one more dimension in that idea forward time travel the most common concept of time travel involves moving forward in time where an individual or object travels into future so not only a human being an object can also travel into future this idea is based on time dilation where an ob object traveling at relativistic speeds ages more slowly than objects at rest so this is a concept of moving forward in time how can you move forward in time that a ta if we are suppose there are two objects there are two human beings consider there are two human beings right one human being is aging naturally aging naturally means let's say he is born in 2001 and he has grown old and is on his deathbed in 2000 80 that is the natural process 79 years he has lived and he is going to die another human being who has born in 2001 and when it is 2080 he is still young so what hap what is happening really he is still young that is not biologically possible because biologically you are supposed to be old by the time you reach the year 79 instead you look like a person who has only grown uh, let's say for 30 years what happened to you for you time has stopped or time is moving very slowly for your body your organs are growing very slowly so your body clock is slower than the original or real time that other people are living in so you can say that when this person is going to die you are only 30 years old so you are actually in the future in the future where you are supposed to die at this time so you are comparatively comparing to the original human being you are already in the future okay this is a little bit i know it is a difficult concept but these are the concepts that physicists have thought about that mathematicians and biologists all of them have thought about these concepts that time travel is not only we hop on a time machine and go to uh, you know future no time can be uh, we can go to the future like this also when our body starts um, when the body clock stops we are already in the future okay where an object traveling at relativistic speeds ages more slowly than objects at rest okay so ages aging is one of the concept and also there is a let me give you an idea of a particle called tachyon tachyon or tachyon whatever uh, you can just um google it and you will see tachyon is a particle which exists actually it is sometimes called as the god particle why is it called the god particle because uh, people have not been able to see this particle they know uh, what is the oh, let me tell you about the particle particle uh, particles can be the nucleus the atoms uh, just um, the neutrons electrons the protons these are particles right they constitute an atom okay so particles are neutrons protons and electrons these are the three particles that are uh, present in the a uh, universe which creates most of the matters they combine together in various uh, different permutation and combination and they form the core elements 
right the elements form the universe so you also have the poem by edwin morgan called the three particles tachyon is one such particle whereas you can see all these particles through electron microscope of course you cannot see them uh, with naked eyes they are so tiny uh, but you can never see a tachyon why because the physicists the mathematicians they have claimed that tachyons are faster than the speed of light that is faster than light do you remember we talked about faster than light when we were talking about uh, the time machine uh, for hg wells right so faster than light particle tachyon is such a particle when you talk about the god particle it is faster than light so when light falls on it light can never actually fall on it because the moment light reaches that place the particle has already moved so you can see where it was but you can never know where it is it is a very fascinating concept you can see where the particle was but you can never know where the particle is right now so you will always we will always remain in the past of the particle i'll give you a very common example of this kind of state if you just look up at the sky the universe okay you will find so many stars out there in the entire sky do you believe that all those stars are there are you sure all of them are there some of them are not there but because light takes uh, a lot of time they are so far away and the light which is emitted from those stars they take thousands of years to reach the uh, planet earth so by the time the light from those stars are reaching earth that planet that star is gone okay so whatever you are looking when you are looking at the sky the stars that you are seeing they are not there at that particular instant you are seeing the past of that star very interesting so if you are able to place a mirror mirror on the head of the particle called the god particle or tachyon which is faster than light then it will go you know go back you can actually go and see the future and or you can make it uh, go and see the past so these are fantastic concepts because we cannot uh, travel faster than light so we will not talk about those things but this is theoretical physics okay backward time travel backward time travel involves moving into the past grandfather paradox this is one of the fascinating paradox that has ever risen from um, the idea of time travel that is suppose we are uh, able to go back in time if i go back in time and you know kill my grandfather right will i be existing it's a grandfather paradox if i kill my grandfather then how am i existing right now because i have gone to the past and killed my grandfather so my grandfather never gave birth to my father my father never gave birth to me then how am i existing so it is a paradoxical situation so if i go and kill my grandfather will i be dead also or i will cease to exist very interesting and if i cease to exist then how if i had already killed him then how did i you know even uh, got born so that is a thing if someone were to travel back in time and change events that led to their own existence right philosophical implications philosophical questions about free will determinism and the nature of causality concept causality means cause we have cause and effect relationship on everything concept of a fixed past and a deterministic future since we are let's say stuck in time we are stuck in time we are stuck in the present always we are never in the past never in the future ha huh, yes we are in the past in our memories 
but we can never be in the future in our memories so future is something completely different but since we are stuck in the past we are stuck in time we cannot move in the past we cannot move in the future we don't have any free will but if time travel is possible there will be possibility of free will also we'll talk about that in some time multiple universe and alternate timelines proposes the existence of multiple universes or alternate timelines in these models traveling back in time could create a new timeline or universe distinct from the original one so to answer for the grandfather paradox that we had if i go back in time what will be the consequence if i go back in time and kill my grandfather will i be dead also so there is an answer to that in this multiple universe and alternate timeline kind of situation that if i go back in time uh, let me give you a kind of um, graphical representation this is my time right i am here i am very much enjoying giving this lecture in front of you uh and uh, i want to go back in time i want to go back and meet my four mothers four fathers and everybody i want to see what the situation was like so i went back to 1947 the partition of india the year india got independence i went back at that time in time travel so when i went back i am actually this is this is my timeline i am supposed to age like this i am supposed to you know after the lecture i will go to the uh, guest house and from there i'll go to my own home place and i'll do my job that is supposed to be my normal timeline but instead i am going back in time in 1947 in 1947 i am not supposed to exist the events of 1947 are supposed to go in a particular manner and my being there my presence being there changes the year 1947 changes the historical events of 1947 so 1947 went down in a particular way but my presence over there over here it is an intervention it is a kind of disturbance from the future so once you disturb a timeline there it ought to create an alternate branch it will not create that same branch again now i am there and it will create an alternate branch for me for me specifically so the timeline that was supposed to go this straight now it has two timelines it has gone this way one which has already happened and one which is happening due to my presence in 1947 so this is the concept of alternate timeline and same with the concept of multiple universe somewhere we are human beings somewhere we are colors somewhere we are uh, animals somewhere we are all these things are happening so these are the concepts of multiple universe and alternate timelines okay wormholes wormholes are very interesting theoretical shortcuts through space time that could potentially allow for time travel has not been observed or proven this is a concept which is yet to be proven and in order to you know give you the idea of a wormhole i have this paper with me over here wormhole is like a hole in space what is that uh, it is a kind of a place which is uh, where the gravity is so much so much that it is bending the space around it right so how does it affect the uh, science fiction that is being created or how does it affect how does it bring about time travel okay so i have a paper in front of me and my object whatever i am going to send from this part to this part i will have to cover the entire distance right if i have to send something from this point on this uh, space to this point of the space i have to make it go like this what wormhole does what gravity does is that it bends the space like this okay 
So now if my object wants to go from this part to this part, it has only to make a hole like this through space and it will be reaching the other part in no time. So this is the concept of wormhole. Causality and temporal paradoxes. Temporal means related to time. Bootstrap paradox where an object or confirmation is sent back in time leading to its own creation or origin. Bootstrap paradox is one of the most fascinating paradox re regards to time travel. That is, if uh, I am suppose in 2040, I am in the year 2040 and I have actually, I have a um, very enigmatic element, enigmatic element which helps me travel through time. I have had that element with me. I have discovered it. I have found it somewhere in the lying in the forest. Okay. The moment I hold it like this, I travel back in time. So from 2040, I travel back to 1940, 100 years, right? So I immediately went back in time and uh, uh, in 1940, I give it to my mother who is very small, who is a young child, you know, she is roaming around here and there. I give this to her, say, you take this and when you grow up, you give it to your daughter. Right? So she takes it from me and when she grows up as usual and she marries my dad, uh, I am born. Then she says, you know, somebody came from the future and she gave it to me. So you take it. Now, this particular thing, this particular thing has lost its originality. Nobody can tell where it originated. It originated because every time it, we are going to talk about it is going in a loop. So somebody in the future will again send it back to the past and this will again come to here and then again it will move in a loop of the time. So you cannot say when was it created, who created it, right? So that is bootstrap paradox where an object or information is sent back in time leading to its own creation or origin. Time machines, the concept of time machine, a device that allows Intentional time travel, various fictional time machines include the TARDIS from Doctor Who and the DeLorean car from Back to the Future. So TARDIS and DeLorean car, these two are very uh, popular kind of names we have. We will have other names also of time machines and uh, ways of time travel. Now, here popular time travel tropes in science fiction. So, I will give you a list of things that happen in science fiction stories. Time slip. How, how does that affect us? Rip Van Winkle, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. This is written by Washington Irving and this is written by Mark Twain. Um, in this story, a sleeper wakes after a long and prolongated sleep due to some kind of um, medication or effect. This is unintentional time travel. They wake up 100 years later, right? So that is unintentional time travel, time slip. So for them, time has slipped. Say they, uh, for example, they fell asleep when they were 20 year old. When they wake up, they are still 20 year old but the world around them has changed, right? So that is time slip, communication from the future, like we talked about in bootstrap paradox, that somebody comes from the future and tells us that these this, this things are going to happen in the future, you should be aware, right? Uh, there is a famous movie about it, The Terminator, you can watch it, it's fantastic. Precognition. Precognition is very interesting. It is not uh, very much used in uh, the, um, the popular science fiction domains, but it is still a very effective kind of time travel trope that is having a deja vu. Deja vu is, uh, it is somewhat of traveling forward in time. You close your eyes, you go to uh, the future, you see what is happening. When you come back to the present, now the same things are happening to you. That is 
you are feeling that these things are happening for the second time. So that is Deja Vu. Actually, there is a movie called Deja Vu uh, starring Denzel Washington. You can go and watch it. It's very interesting. So precognition is like memories from the future. You have gone to the future. Now, whatever you remember, actually memories should be should belong to the past, right? But now you have memories of the future. So when whatever happens to you in the future is like reliving, reliving the past. Time loop. Periods of time are repeated and re-experienced by the characters. We have talked about one of the books that are uh, written in this way. That is, um, okay, we have talked about one of the movies that are made in this way, The Edge of Tomorrow, starring Tom Cruise. It is based on a Japanese novel. Uh, it is based on a Japanese novel uh, starring uh, the protagonist name is Keiji. There, the soldier is um, sort of entwined in a time loop and uh, every time he dies, he again is born in the starting of the loop. Every time the loop is moving around, the soldier is actually uh, gaining skills, battle skills. So, un until and unless he is perfect, he keeps moving through the loop and one day he kills the alien who, who has created the loop to begin with. Experiencing time in reverse. Merlin lived backwards. Future was a memory. Merlin is a character in um, the Arthurian romances. It's a very old character, Arthurian romances. He is considered to be one of the um, magicians in Arthur's court. And uh, for Merlin, Merlin said that I can see the future. Why? Because Merlin is supposedly living his time backwards. His, for him, the future happened first, then the time is going backwards. Uh, there is also a very famous movie regarding the same concept, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. If you want, you can watch the movie. It's fantastic, starring Brad Pitt. Record. The Man in the High Castle, it's a book, books reporting alternate timeline. So it is a book written um, mostly to show that there is a library where there are books which are telling about events which are not even happening in this world. So where are those records coming from? Because they are the records of a different timeline, of an alternate timeline, of um, belonging to another universe. Uh, popularizing the concept of multiverse actually. Time tourism, a sound of thunder, big game hunters who travel the distant past to hunt dinosaurs. Time becomes a place for tourism. Oh, I don't feel good today. Let me go and enjoy 1920s scenario. I feel very bored today. I want to take a vacation. So I'm going to go to 2050 society and uh, take a let's say um, a session of AI um, meditation, something like that, AI yoga, okay. So time becomes a place for touring and traveling. It is like you sit in a, a car, a compartment and you visit different spaces. You can go to your birth time, you can go to your death time and see what is happening. Very interesting. Finally, time war, time and again the fallout of Chronopolis and the time of the fox. These are some works. Uh, a very recently there was a movie release, probably its name is The Future War. Uh, there, soldiers are sent from present to the future because the future is dark, the future war uh, is happening between the human race and the aliens, and the humans are losing. So, the future society, they have built a time machine. They are requesting the previous generation, the pre few, uh, past of the world to come and help them because the people are already dead. The population is uh, almost gone. If the past population does not help the future population, then humanity will be extinct. So it's a very interesting concept. You can have a look at that. Now I will talk about a very famous personality. He is an astrophysicist. His name is Neil deGrasse Tyson. I will talk about him more uh, uh, and of some. Uh, I will talk about him more and science communication 
themes along with Carl Sagan, the mentor of Neil deGrasse Tyson. You can just uh, Google Neil deGrasse Tyson and science communication. You will get to know a lot of details about him. So, Tyson talks about the time travel paradoxes, right? Time is relative. These are some of the uh, words from, these are some of the quotations taken from his interviews. Time is relative. So, time can be stretched. Time is relative. So, time can be stretched. For me, relative to you. For you, it will be the same. For me, time can be stretched. So, time has multiple sort of parallel rates at which it flows. So, my perception is it does not flow equally for everybody. It flows slower for some people at some point of time. It flows steadily from some for other people at the same point of time. Depending on the state of who's making the measurement and the state of who's in motion and what conditions they are in. So all these factors affect the movement of time. Whether I'm sitting in one place or I'm moving around, this is also something that makes me determine whether the time is running fast or running slow. Right? Suppose another thing is what he says is suppose you could move around in your timeline with the same flexibility as moving left and right, up and down, forward and backward. If that is the case, you can revisit your own timeline. Under those conditions, you do not die. You are always dying. You are not born. You are always being born. That's another kind of interesting way to think about time. If you can move around in your timeline, right? If I can go back to when I was 16 or if I can go forward to when I am 90, I will always be moving around in my own, own timeline. And I will never be born really and I'll never die really, but I will always, be, those two points are fixed. So I cannot go beyond 100 or I cannot go beyond zero, but I will always keep moving inside my timeline. So I will never die or neither will I be born. We have discussed the bootstrap paradox and then there is the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect is uh, an effect which is taken from chaos theory, chaos theory or game theory. These things are very interesting. If you want, you can take a look. Chaos theory says that uh, the entire cosmos is in a chaos, but there is method in madness, right? So one flutter of the wing of a butterfly can create a tornado in the other side of the world. That is what chaos theory tells us. If you create any small kind of deviation in the timeline, if you go back in time, if you try to ruin any small quantity in which the time is being measured, if you are able to disturb the timeline, there will be very big consequences, very dangerous, very harmful or maybe uh, a lot of different timelines will be born if you are going to disturb the flow of time. So that is the butterfly effect. You pivot everything on this one thing and tell me that all of the civilization will be different. Now Tyson tries to tell us that it is not really uh, possible you know, if you just say that, okay, one uh, flutter of the wing of a butterfly can create a tornado somewhere else, but let us be very um, observant and considerate uh, while considering this idea. I am not buying it. Civilization is more robust than that. He says that the butterfly effect is not that much. Um, you cannot say that this is exactly what would happen. Civilization is bigger than one person doing anything with time. And if Hitler was killed as a child, so if I go back in time and kill Hitler, then there will be no World War II. That is what I would think, right? But Tyson says that if you kill Hitler as a child, then no, maybe not. The Germans were ripe to have somebody rise up and take control of their psyche. So Germans 
they had that kind of atmosphere that kind of environment that kind of culture among themselves where they were able to uh, create hitler that is what he is saying and maybe the circumstances made hitler not hitler making the circumstances so hitler the person was made by the time which he lived in not uh, hitler did not make the time the time made hitler that is what his argument is so these are some examples uh, where you will find time travel in science fiction you can go through these novels these are fantastic fantabulous whatever adjectives i give you right now they are they will really fall short of praising these novels the time machine by ag wells 1895 time traveler journeys to the distant future and witnesses the evolution of humanity slaughterhouse 5 by kurt vonnegut experiences of billy pilgrim an american soldier who becomes unstuck in time like i told you earlier we are stuck in time that is we are in the past we are in the future we lived in the past we are in the present and we will move towards the future but being unstuck in time that we don't know where we are sometimes we are going in the past sometimes we are going in the future it is very difficult for us so experiences various moments from his life including his time as a prisoner of war during world war 2 and his abduction by aliens outlander by diana gabaldon claire randall a world war 2 nurse who accidentally travels back in time in 18th century scotland There she becomes involved in the Jacobite risings and falls in love with the dashing Highlander. Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, an African American woman named Dana, finds herself transported back in time to the antebellum South, where she confronts the horrors of slavery. Doomsday Book by Connie Willis, set in both the 14th century and the future where historians travel back in time to study various periods challenges and dangers of navigating the past these are very uh, interesting fictions as well the time traveler's wife by audrey niffenegger romantic science fiction a librarian who involuntarily involuntarily time travels and his wife claire who experiences their relation linearly that means they the it's a movie also the time traveler's wife the wife is actually experiencing their relationship moving in a linear way but the husband is constantly time traveling sometimes he is coming back as younger something sometimes he is coming back as older but the wife is always seeing the husband and experiencing their relationship moving in time uh, linearly the end of eternity by isaac asimov The time traveling organization called Eternity manipulates history to create the best possible future for humanity. All you need is kill by Hiroshi Sakurazaka, Japanese science fiction, a soldier named Keiji. We discussed just about this uh, previously when we were talking about time loop, right? Keiji caught in a time loop. relieving the same battle against alien invaders until he gains the skills to change the outcome 112263 by stephen king stephen king is again one of the best science fiction writers in today's world a man discovers a portal to the past that allows him to travel back in 1958 he decides to prevent the assassination of john f kennedy leading to unforeseen consequences so you try to change the time the time will never be the same you even if you try to keep things in a certain way the time will always you know might uh, the time will always make a different path it will never be the same time and again by jack finney an advertising artist participates in a government experiment that sends him back to new york city in 1882 now we come to the most um, you know awaited section that is thinking about everything that we discussed here today how does the concept of time travel in science fiction differ from real world theories and possibilities here we have to go and research the novels that we have discussed the works the literary works that we have discussed so far are they 
do they have any similarities with any of the ideas expressed in literature elsewhere or are there what kind of uh, physics related theories there are which can explain such things which are mentioned in the science fiction works. Name some science fiction authors who explore the time travel theme. What are the famous time travel strategies used by the authors whom you have read about so far? Time travel often involves complex paradoxes like we discussed about the grandfather paradox, we discussed about the butterfly effect, we discussed about the bootstrap paradox. You just go to Google and type time paradoxes or time travel paradoxes, you will get a list. It's very interesting and food for thought also. How do these paradoxes challenge the logic of time travel narratives? Research about the latest time travel movies, web series and novels released in the last five years. Make a report on the innovative plot devices that the narratives use. So once you find that you are able to answer all of these questions, you will know that you have a very good grasp on time travel and science fiction and how do these two fields combine together. Uh, and produced wonders and wonders uh, throughout the uh, ages of literature that we are experiencing now. So, in the next lecture, we will be moving towards uh, science fiction and space travel. This particular lecture and the lecture of space travel together will confirm or will contribute to the time space or space time understanding of science fiction. Now here is a list of references for your understanding, better understanding. Uh, Bigthing.com, Hard Science, Neil deGrasse Tyson explains the strange paradoxes of time travel. This is from, this is the place from where I have collected the quotations. If you want, you can go. But in YouTube, you just type Neil deGrasse Tyson. There are umpteen number of videos, and uh, he is also a part of the master class. Uh, which is organized by uh, very prominent um, leaders, industry leaders in science fiction. So you can listen, always listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson's. Uh, um, you can always listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcasts. Sterling Bruce, Science Fiction Time Travel, Encyclopedia Britannica. So anytime you want to have a uh, just easy go read about time travel, you can just go to Encyclopedia Britannica. There is a particular article by Bruce Sterling. Gary Westphal, Science Fiction and the Two Cultures, Essays on Bridging the Gap Between Sciences and the Humanities. Here you will find mentions of the time travel trope. Patrick Parinder, Learning from Other Worlds, Estrangement, Cognition and the Politics of Science Fiction and Utopia. Time travel has also been discussed here. Brian Stableford, Science Facts and Science Fiction and Encyclopedia. This is also a very good book to go for time travel narratives. Chelsea Quinn, Yarbrough, Time Loop, The Encyclopedia of Science Fiction. This is also another book where uh, which I have taken the name of multiple times. You can just go and look at this particular chapter. And finally, I discuss always about uh, David Seed, his very short introduction to science fiction. For a beginner, this is the best book. Thank you for um, bearing with me here today. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. The next lecture will be on space and science fiction. So time and space together, um, put together, we will understand where the science fiction um, exists today in the space-time continuum. Thank you very much. Thank you.